and numerous different stories and things and it's been a long journey for you i think it's been about 18 years didn't we didn't we say joe for, for your side it's about about 18 years yeah. that you've been practicing foundations for farming yeah that's true um and you you told me a story about in your community you actually pointed we were standing in your field and you pointed to a house on the horizon you said there's a, a, a widow there um with a child and she's unable to support the child uh, what did you do in response to that? Yeah, that's true. Uh, in our community, we have got so far widows. Uh, as, as that, you know, that, that widow, uh, she has got uh, children with eight years. Her mother was caught by a crocodile on the 24th of December while she was doing washing on uh, a river after she was finished. And then she wanted to take the cloth and put it on the tissue want to go home and after that the, another cloth fell down and she, the, the time that she took that cloth and tried to clean it again wash it in the water and she was taken by a crocodile so until today she was struggling with that children as an orphan so so she was unable to 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 uh, to live, to survive, to be fed, the, the child? Yes, there is a, cha a challenge. So as a champion, I want to thank God because I was learned a lot of uh, principles here from Foundation for Farming. We are doing the program of farming and we are getting food. So the time that I hear that story and see that children, uh, it touches me. That's why I take uh, some maize and give him and some beans and give him to the one who is sponsored for that lay children so she's surviving give her food so you're supporting the the family that has taken those children in and has the responsibility of looking after those children yes that lost true. their mother yes that's true and so they're being fed by you as a neighbor from the excess from your field that's true you are a faithful, a faithful steward. Yes. <laughs> I, I wanted to just have that story from your own mouth because when you told that to me in your field, I was I was touched because that's that's what this is all about. Yes. That's the heart of what we do. What is the what is the purpose of of doing everything that we do, other than to do exactly this to be able to see the needs that are surrounding us and to make a plan for those that have that have lost those the vulnerable the the oppressed. The ones that need support, that need assistance, that need help. And you, you're doing that. You're living that. And I just wanted to thank you for that, uh, Joe. It's a real inspiration to us. Ah, that's true. Thank and we, we know that you couldn't do that in your own strength. But we see God in you, uh, giving you that compassion, giving you that ability to serve the needs of the, the team around you. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. much. So, so Paul, I didn't know that I'd met Paul a number of times and, and Paul is a master farmer in the government. I've been at government uh, field days where they've, unbeknownst to us, that, that they've selected him as a model farmer to come and share his story. And we're saying, hey, but that's, that's one of our guys. We, 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 know, we know Paul. Um, and so he's been there on the platform and, and Paul tells his story so, so well. But I didn't realize until just about a month or a couple of weeks, six weeks ago, that actually... Uh, Paul used to work on the next door farm to where Brian started this journey 40 years ago. So, so Paul, uh, across the, the, the way, sort of saw what was happening and Brian was, was sharing into the community uh, the things that God was showing him. And he started to do it. And, and Paul realized back then the, and had this kind of faithful heart to say, hey, this works and I'm going to be faithful with this vision. Uh, for now for 20 years and as a result because of these two gentlemen their community is transformed there is there is no hunger in that community because they're meeting the needs of the people around them Paul I sorry I don't want to steal your thunder but at the at the <laughs> government field day when they they brought him in to, to share and show pictures of his farm and tell stories uh, he, he had done three from foot plots that's three of these blocks that you see over here and of those three maize from Futsa plots had reaped three tons. That, that's 16 tons per hectare equivalent, which is, is mind-blowing. If, if you are a big commercial farmer and you get above 10 tons per hectare, you're in the 10-ton club. You're a big boy. This is yeah. serious farming now. 
So to achieve 16 tons per hectare just a few years ago, that would have been a national record. A national farming record because of the faithfulness. And so, so Paul, uh, you are a diminutive man, but you are a giant in the kingdom of heaven. And I wanted to just thank you. I was really impressed by your faithfulness in your field. I think a, a seed company had come there and given you eight different varieties yes. to trial for them. And you were doing it and they were all beautiful yeah. and, and weed free and just such perfection there. You're a great record keeper. You pulled out the, the rainfall records from the season. And you told me you, I, every single day had a, an entry. And, uh, and I think you told me that on the day that I visited you, we were 43 millimeters behind the same amount of rainfall we had at this time last year. That's true. Yeah. This is, this is me meticulous record keeping. This is, this is incredible diligence and faithfulness. And, and so I've said everything that, that <laughs> you probably had to say, but, yeah. but I wanted to just say, how? Where, where did this come from? This, this incredible faithfulness and how do we capture this spirit and share it? Because I met a number of people from your community that, that you're training. So I want to know, teach us, how do we replicate you? in all of these communities. What happens is, if you're doing it on your own, men as I am, it's impossible. Yes. You need the Creator, yes. who is God, yeah. through God's will. And my copings from the Goddess Messenger, Brian Audrey, mm -hmm. you'll manage. Yeah. I think I've answered you. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so you know, human nature is competitive. We kind of we, we compete. We, we're interested in competitive gains. We don't really care how well we're doing. We just want to be doing better than the person next to us. Isn't that your experience of life? We we compete and we we we, we judge ourselves based on the performance of the people around us. And and so what I saw out there and what I've seen over the last couple of years in this community is is not that. There's, there's like a, there's a different spirit, there's a mutuality. How, what is that and how does that work? What it is, is uh, we go around, after praying, we visit communities, we visit compounds, we visit families, bring them together and teach them the principles of Foundations for Farming. And when we are teaching, get this clear, we don't teach them to do similar things that are done here at Foundations for Farming. We teach them to do the same things that are done here. Because similar and same are not same or similar. <laughs> so, so how come, Joe, how come there is this different spirit? How come you're, you're not jealous of Paul? When you see Paul's uh, groundnut plot, you say, wow, his are better than mine. Why aren't you jealous? How, how come that spirit has been broken there as a team? Yeah, because we work as a team. Because we're taught here to Foundation for Farming, go and work as a team. Mm. So not just to uh, say, go and work as a team, and if you are outside there, you are not working as a team. But we are working as a team to encourage one another to do a good thing. Mm. If he does a good thing, I become happy with what he's doing. We are neighbors. I think those people who came yesterday, they saw what we are doing there. We encourage each other. If I fail, and I, what can I do? I go to Mr. Four. How can you do this and this? Because we came to the same school. We have learned the principles at the Foundation for Farming, the same principles without changing, changing it. That's why we are encouraging one another. Thank you. Wonderful. And, and you demonstrated, and, and it's, you've, it's in the video as well. You see Joe pulling that um, kind of, it's, what, what is it? It's a, it's a machine. It's a special machine that you designed and built uh, to, to make life easier, to enable you to do your work faster. Tell us about that tool and how you developed it. Yeah, that tool, at first, uh, let me go back for uh, that question a, a little bit. I know Brian Audrey in 2008 at Westgate. So there is a challenge comes to us by doing crop rotation. Like we are doing maize. Maize sometimes become easy because we have got stations. But when it comes to legumes, there is a little bit of challenge when we are on the ground to mark those fallows. But after struggling, we didn't say because at 
put some fallows is too hard for us or too difficult. We didn't leave it. No, we, we have searched a way out. How can you do it? Because you want to do what? Crop rotation. We have struggled, we have done, I think, three models. One, we are using a, a standard steel. We cut it like this, then we put a string, we try to mark line by line, then we change. We mark line by line, then we change. We have seen that it is right, but it takes a long time. A model two, we are using a pick again to mark that, those lines, but it became a challenge a little bit. But we do all farming for those some years, 2008 until now. But in 2019, after we came here and learned for Fumbuza more and more and more, some principles are not changing. But what is changing is what God is doing to give more way. Because if you read the Bible on Proverbs 24, verse 20, the work of a man comes from God. How can I understand my, 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 my work? And then we say, say together, Mr. Pofua, what can we do? It's better to modify a machine like this and this. At first, that machine, it doesn't have some wheels. It's too hard for us to pull because all times they go deeper because there is no an adjustment. Then we go again, no, it seems like it's too hard for us to pull because those people were doing kept using kettles. All kettles are dead. But the more something happens in life, let me tell you, God can still goes and in another step of a ladder. That's why I gave that machine. Then we put some wheels by asking one another. Then we put some wheels. It becomes easy for us. And those wheels are the, the adjustment for times not to go deeper or come at the top. That is the machine that we are using. And that machine is so simple. I and my wife, we are planting two from Buddha plot for ground nuts. as from six o'clock until 11 o'clock, finished. I've got some videos for that. Two Fumbuza is very simple. Thank you. I, I think it's just forgotten. The, we have named the tool a Joe Paul Faro Opener. <laughs> <laughs> so can we get a patent for the Joe Paul Faro Opener? Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's so cool because what we're seeing here is the next level, the next generation. So remember Brian, when Brian expanded to a point where it was no longer uh, possible to continue by hand. He started to develop machinery and started to, to do what we would now call a no-till drill. And, and that machinery and that equipment was, was a tool from God that God gave him the insight how to not invert soil and not destroy the soil profile, but to continue to expand. And now here we see this again developed by the, the need in community to address a particular issue in that community. So well done guys, you are pioneers, you are ambassadors, and it's amazing to see what you're doing. Uh, Mr. Foy, you, I, I also met another gentleman that came, you, you pointed at the, the mountain where he stays, but it was too far for us to travel there. Um, how, how are you reaching out to people that far afield and around you? And you, you guys told me that his fields, we need to get there because his fields are even as smart as yours. Yes, um, this man is called uh, Maronje by name. He stays in a mountainous area. We traveled on bicycles some years ago. We managed to scout around for people. We gathered lots of people there. There are farmers around there. If I'm not mistaken, our records show about 650 farmers that we've trained on our own. That did not come onto foundations for farming and are surviving quite a lot. Now, that man we are talking of used to grow crops on mountains and he abandoned those fields and started to go onto some sandy soils. And then we went and taught him about mulching, the goat's blanket, about these methods that we, we, are, we are taught here. And he started doing them. In three years' time, he abandoned all those sandy soils and he's back on the mountains and getting a good harvest out of those. <laughs> So, so don't you just love that? Uh, according to our records, our records show that's part of faithful stewardship is, is keeping a record, keeping account and being able to, to, to tell the story. And so thank you so much for your faithful record keeping because there's a story to tell. And we, we've got evidence now, we've got a history, we've got a, um, evidence to, to display what God has done. And we can look back and say, wow, look at the 650 people in the mountainous region uh, 
in, in bicycle riding distance uh, from you guys. Well done. Thank you for that. Thank you. Anything that you want to add and then I'll get yes. the last word to Joe. Yes. Um, not much. What it is, as you have heard from Matt, uh, a certain company asked me to grow their seeds, May seed. I've done eight varieties. They are all in good shape. I think people that came to my place yesterday have seen it. They can testify on that one. But the only thing that uh, I am against them is if there are any lawyers amongst you, I want to sue the company. <laughs> the reason is the maize that they gave me, I have grown it nicely. It's very tall. The cob is about a meter from my height. So how am I going to rip that? <laughs> That's what I want. That's why I want to sue the company. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you guys. In fact, guys, will you, uh, Mr. Fua, will you stay with us, please? Um, can I ask? Can I ask Craig to pray for them, please? And Brian. Obviously, the the story began way back with you, Brian. Will you also come and join us, please? God's eyes roam this earth looking for faithful stewards. And he looks down and he sees this pair from Matsiwa. Just want to pray for them and bless them and their families. The people around them who are benefiting from their unselfishness, the way that they just pour out to others and riding to the mountains to share the goodness of God to the people in their area. Lord, this has been a long journey for them. They are endurers as well. They are enduring. And so, Father, would you just anoint them to go even further, Lord? Would you just anoint them to be a more of a blessing to their community? I just thank you for them. And Lord, I hope, pray that they feel your great delight in their service to you and the kingdom. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Oh, Father, it's a great joy and blessing to sit, to stand next to these two brothers, Lord God. They are indeed brothers in Christ Jesus with me. I love them greatly, Father, and I thank you for the way they've grown in knowledge of you. Father, I just remember Baba Paul, who was a manager on a farm who came there and he's been such a model. Thank you that he speaks with such clarity of your truth, Lord God, with such courage. And I thank you for, for dear Joe, Lord God. This young man as he was then and he still is, bless you, Lord God. That there was a massive gully on his farm and he went with a wheelbarrow and demolished a whole massive ant heap into that place to make it level. And Father, he was the one who then put pegs with into, into concrete, Lord God, to make a right angle in the, in the corners of his field. Such was the diligence of excellence that he wanted to glorify you with, Lord God. That has been a benchmark that is seen in the heavens by you, Lord God, that has been multiplied into a continent. And I thank you for that standard that's come from these two brothers, Lord God. How they've joined together in such unselfish, opposite of jealousy, Lord God, but love for each other. Are they, and Father, that's a model for us all. May they go forward with this message, Lord God, of loving each other with no jealousy. Because jealousy is a great problem in Africa, Lord God. And we praise you that through this obedience, it's demolishing a stronghold that's held this continent in, in bondage for a long time. Father, I ask you to anoint them with further courage, that they will be, they love you, Jesus. Will you use them to demolish ancestral worship and witchcraft in this continent? I know that they have the courage to stand against that massive uh, opposition of the evil one, Lord God. Will you bless them and keep them safe under the blood of Christ Jesus? 
I thank you for the full armor of God that clothes him and your angels that surround him. And Lord God, I pray for your wall of fire and hitch to protect them onwards in this wonderful union of example for your glory. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Joe's son, is Joe's son here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, grand, grand daughter. Okay, would you come and, and join us as well? So this is the next generation, mm, and, yes, uh, yes. and I think it's so cool what has been happening out there and continuing through you. So you're part of this generational blessing, this legacy <coughs> now is passing on to you. Do you know that there are men and women from all over the world, not only that are here now, but that have been over the past several years, that have come and seen and learnt and seen the models that are here, that they've carried that out all over the world. Mm. Just today there's 15 different nations from Liberia to New Zealand to America to England that are here and have witnessed the testimony of the power of, of God in, in these men. May you continue that in the next generation. Mm. Mm. May you be blessed and continue the story. Mm. Okay, thank you. God bless you guys. Thank you for your time.